All right, guys, welcome back to another video. The, today, we have the 2020 BMW X7 40i. Now, this is just the regular 40i, meaning this is not the M Sport line. As you can see, this has the X line, uh, which is the standard one that you do get on the X7 40i. As you can see, there's silver garnishes around the front of the car. There's window surrounds are all in silver, the roof rails, as well as that signature kind of hockey stick design on the side of the car uh, that BMW puts on the 7 Series and their X7. Um, that's all in silver trim. As you can see, this is about pure luxury, you know, all about having the utmost comfort, you know, mo most spacious, has an excellent ride. And I'll tell you, that, and I'll, I'm going to tell you guys something right now. This has an amazing ride. Um, you know, the, the uh, you know, driver's assistance features, air suspension. This one is equipped with the air suspension. And I mean, this is, you know, a fully loaded, um, you know, X7 that we're going to go through right now. Uh, as this one sits, it's it's priced at about one hundred and five thousand dollars. This is equipped with uh, you know the premium enhanced package, as well as the uh, advanced assistance package, and also includes the B uh, the signature BMW laser lights. The X7 uh, you know is in a very you know competitive market, um, not as competitive as you might think. This competes with the Mercedes GLS class, as well as the Audi Q7 to some extent, and obviously even the Lincoln Navigator. But the surprising thing is if you are, you know, you're looking for the utmost comfort, you just want, you know, the most luxurious, the most comfortable, you know, the best of the best for a seven seater full size luxury SUV, you know, Rolls Royce and Bentley, these guys don't make seven seater SUVs. So if you're, you know, even if you're looking for the best of the best, you're looking at you know, the Mercedes Lincoln or BMW. And I think out of all three, uh, B Mercedes definitely lags behind looks. Um, it's a very Mercedes has a very subtle design language, almost unnoticeable. The X7 has a very, very bold statement on the road. You know, this thing when it's driving on the road, you can tell from far away. You know, with those with those skinnier headlights, that bold design language in the front, even for just the X line, uh, you can tell there's a, that big beast coming on the road. And it definitely does has a presence. Um, you know, uh, on the road as, you know, a big SUV, you know, pure luxury. Now, obviously this isn't, you know, the top of the line, you know, this is a 40i, there's also an M50i that you could get, which comes standard, obviously it's an M50i, comes standard with M Sport line, obviously, uh, which also comes standard with a 4.4 liter uh, twin turbocharged V8, which makes over 500 horsepower. But something like this, you know, you want something just that that's that gets you from point A to point B in most comfort, and you're looking, you're 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 going to be looking for you know the BMW X7. As we all go through, the options are you know there's a lot of options, which really makes you think which competitor is really better than this. Because uh, you know you look at Lincoln Navigator and Mercedes GLS, they're very competitive, but when you look at what we have BMW has to offer, you know they just you know put everything. Uh, to your to the customers like and we'll go over that in just a second so as I said it comes with all those packages it comes at $105,000 uh, it's about 203 inches long it's about 70 79 inches wide and 71 inches tall but again as you can see right now this is actually sitting in the lowest setting for the air suspension so obviously this has a two axle air suspension that comes standard um, and this uh, is sitting at the lowest height. Obviously, you could increase it to the normal height or the, the absolute highest height. And uh, it could do zero to 100 to, uh, in 5.6 seconds. And also, this has, uh, this, that's you know, uh, due to the three liter inline six cylinder, which makes uh, you know, the traditional inline six cylinder for B almost all BMW models 335 horsepower, 330 pound feet of torque. And uh, you know, this uh, gets you a pretty good competitive gas mileage, actually. It gets you 12.4 in the city, 9.8 on the highway, which makes it a combined rating of 11.1 uh, liters per 100 kilometers. It was definitely very class competitive um, and it weighs in just under 5,400 pounds. There's a lot to go through in this car, so let's start at the front. You know, obviously, as I mentioned, this has BMW's laser lights. This is the first uh, BMW that I've reviewed that has the laser lights. The previous uh, three didn't. But as you can see, you know, you can tell the laser lights, which has the, all the blue accents in the car, uh, in the uh, in the headlight housing. The laser lights uh, basically provide almost uh, double the uh, the uh, the distance that you would get in the regular full adaptive LED lights, which are nice. The laser lights again are only in the high beams, and they work at uh, you know about 50 kilometers an hour. 
again as you can see the silver garnish part of the x-line trim uh, the x-line uh, uh you know the x-line that's equipped with this car you have uh you know the vents are mostly closed off but again a little bit open on the side you have some parking sensors around the front as you can see you have fog lights way down at the bottom in the m sport line they usually come a little bit a little bit higher up there um and uh as you can see this is obviously the big uh the big grill that comes on the uh, bmw this is one of the bigger grills i believe the biggest one right now is on the 7 series um or i might be wrong actually because uh the same size one on the 7 series looks big uh but nonetheless it's one of the bigger uh kidney girls but to be honest like you know i i i i truly truly you know did not like this car at first i used to make fun of it if anybody would ask me you know which suv would i get full-size suv i would say the first thing without without thinking twice i would say the x7 this is just you know it has such a bold statement it's you know it has a presence on the road you know and it's, it's it's overall such a nice looking suv definitely a better looking suv than the audi and the mercedes in my opinion this one would be a very good competitor right but um you know it, it all depends on what the customer is looking for but this one will definitely give you a good run uh for your money it's definitely a very very beautiful suv uh but again you know kidney grills you have your uh you know camera in the front again this has the premium enhanced package so uh, it comes with the, the the parking assistant plus with the surround view we'll take a look at that uh just very briefly because uh um you know i did a full review on that on the m340i um but again yeah and as you can see the adaptive cruise control radar is right here you can tell if bmw has it if you see this big you know circle um you know at the bottom uh, of the car um of uh, most bmw models again you have the you know the side steps that that's an option that was equipped with this car and here is the uh, BMW Y the Y spoke wheel. They're not M wheels, um, obviously because it's not an M Sport line. But it has a, it's running on all season tires. It's 285, 45, R21, uh, 21 inch tires all around. Design isn't the best option. Uh, there are a, there is a better 22 uh, inch wheel um, that personally I would go for um, on the spec. But it's definitely it's still a nice looking. Uh, uh, wheel is just not it's not might not be for everyone it's also the smaller size it's only 21 inches um obviously 21 only 21 is an understatement um sorry an overstatement but looking out of the back they definitely you know hit it out of the ballpark with the design it's a very sleek design nothing nothing crazy no you know no risks the taillights are very very reminiscent of the 7 series and just overall you know the proportion of this car as well it's very very nice again x7 x drive 40i um in nice silver garnishes and at the back it's simple you have silver you have a silver uh, trim at the back no diffuser or anything like that that's what you would get in the m sport line and you have a regular exhaust system uh it's not an m sport uh, exhaust system so i'm not going to bother uh, going with the sound or anything it's pretty quiet um which is something again you would want in a car like this you don't want anything crazy this is you know all about comfort and we'll look into that a little bit more later but since we're in the back this obviously again this is the top of the line you know the suv so obviously it comes with you know kick to open and this obviously has a split tailgate right so it opens up the the top part and the bottom part opens up as well as the bottom part is mechanical obviously this has air suspension so let's say you know you're loading something heavy you know uh and you want you know you need to pick up the pick up the item and put it into the car you could actually if the car's in its regular height or at a high at a at the above normal height and you need to lower the car you just press this button and the car will actually lower all the way to the bottom so that you can it, so it can get it can make it easier for you to um you know load your items and it has this nice soft uh, soft material so you know again they didn't really have to do that the x5 for example doesn't have all this cloth you know on the on this portion of the the trunk they didn't have to do that but again you know a soft you know entrance into the into the trunk which is nice you have a bunch of buttons to lower and um to recline or uh, bring back up the seats you could do that from here for both rows which is absolutely amazing you don't have to go around all the time and you know go put down the the second row seats separately and the third row seats separately you can all do it all from here so as you can see obviously the one that's further in is for the second row so if i push this down and you want to do the third row right actually you just push it all the way in and then it goes all the you know you don't have to keep holding it you do the same thing with the third row third row push all the way down and leave it 
you know, make a bunch of noises, drop the headrests. There you go. And you get about 90, 90 inches, uh, 90 cubic feet of space, which is absolutely amazing. The Lincoln Navigator basically, um, basically has the most amount of, uh, set behind the third row, behind the second row amount of space, uh, behind the third row, behind the second row, even behind the first row. Um, has the, the Lincoln Navigator has the most amount of space. After that, the BMW comes right, be, uh, right behind. But behind the third row, I'm just gonna put the, just the third row back up. Okay, so to put the third row back up, you have to, uh, the front seats, second row seats are gonna move up. These are gonna come back up. You have to put the head, headrest back up separately. But this gets you about 14 cu cubic feet of space behind the third row, which is actually pretty lacking behind the other competitors. Um, you know, I believe Mercedes has about, um, you, know, you know, the s uh, same amount, but the Lincoln Navigator again has more. The Audi Q7 even has more than that as well. And Q7 is a, is a shorter car overall. So if you are, if, if behind the third row is, you know, you absolutely know that you're going to need an extra few cubic feet of space, you know, for sure, then next seven might not be something you want to consider. But once you've put those third row, that, that third row down, BMW, BMW starts competing pretty well with Audi, Mercedes, um, and whatnot. Again, Lincoln Navigator just owns um, the segment right now in terms of space behind all, uh, behind all rows. All right, guys, so stepping in. Obviously, this has the, uh, the, sides, the side steps, that, which we talked about. Again, that's an option. And as you can see here, there's basically leather all over this car. In nice, nice leather padding. Um, again, something that you would expect over here, as you can see, there's, these are these metal controls. Um, again, this is the X7. The X7 comes standard with these, you know, as I talked about in the 430i video, you don't have to pay extra to get these galvanic controls, the, uh, the, the metal trim, it'll come, the, the metal uh, buttons, it'll come standard um, on the X7. Yeah, the memory seats, there's two person memory, it's black plastic, but again, you know, you're not gonna be nitpicking everything. The most thing is, the most things that you're gonna be touching, you know, like the window, the, the window up and down most of the time, and the lock and unlock button, those are all in good uh, finishes and good material. As you can see, obviously, the, the two person memory, this number two over here, actually, if you press that, that and, and if you press that and start moving the, um, the seat controls, that actually move the passenger seat. So right now, the passenger but that two it means the passenger and if you were to move this so i'm just gonna right and if i tilt it back right so like let's say for example you know the last person who sat you know you know reclined their seat all the way and you know they're just chilling on the passenger side and now there's passengers trying that are trying to come in from the back you could just simply instead of going all the way around and trying to you know you know look for the seat controls or whatever you just simply do it from right here uh x5s have this um x7s have this um, a few of the uh, of the uh, BMW lineups they have it, but it comes in the premium enhanced package. You can't get the, you can't get in on the essential package, which is important. Uh, you have your trunk release uh, trunk open and close button right there, um, and also you have these uh, the, bu these buttons to move the rear seat. So for example, uh, let's say someone's just trying to get into the third row, instead of going all the way back and pressing the button, um, you know you just you could just do it all the, all from here. So if we just move this forward, so you'll see what will happen. Front seats will move forward to give it more space, and the rear seats will move forward as much as you need. Which is absolutely amazing. Gives you the maximum amount of room. And if you just check out the back, look how much room that you get to get into the back. More than enough, more than enough room. And from back here, there's these buttons over here, right? So after someone gets in, they could just, someone sitting in the back, they could just put their hand around and put both of their seats back down. So obviously over here you have your galvanic controls again standard you have your window switch you also have your uh sun uh, your sun visors at the back or not visors but the protectors um that will come up and you can also, also control it on that side as well from here which is all nice um and obviously this has the enhanced package so you have your uh you have a, a usb c ports on each uh in the back of each uh seat which is nice you could have you could attach a um you know an ipad uh or anything or something or uh, if you get the um the entertainment package option for this car then they'll get attached over there as well again you got nice pockets as well that are uh, for extra storage obviously this car again this because this has the enhanced package comes with five zone climate control right so you have two in the front two in the back and also right right there is your fifth one um, I'm gonna go in the back and check it out right now 
Uh, but again, as you can see, you know, there's plenty of space at the back. I'm just going to move the seat back um, over here. You know, and, you know, again, 5'11", and, you know, this seat has actually moved a little bit more far back than where I would sit, and I have plenty, plenty of room. You know, I would be more than fine sitting back here. But again, the second row isn't really the problem. It's more about, you know, wh what's the seating seating uh, situation like, you know, in the, in the uh, third row. So I'm just going to move this all the way up. Once you're all the way in, just come up here, press the switch, and it'll come all the way down. And as it as it feels your your uh, your knees touch, it'll just stop right there. It's not going to squish you. Um, for five eleven, honestly, this is actually pretty tight for me. Um, you know, I would probably move it a little bit up. You know, um, probably not all the way, but again, the front. I don't know how comfortable the front passengers will be, but I feel like seven people is more than enough. Any, anybody six feet or higher probably have a little bit of trouble uh, sitting back here if it really comes to that. Uh, but just generally over here, you know, obviously you have your fifth climate control here. You have heated seats on both sides, automatic AC, you know, you name it. Fifth, you know, the fifth uh, zone, uh, uh, you know, climate control, which is absolutely amazing. You still you have ambient lighting also over here as well. And that pulsing red light is telling me right now that the door is open at the back uh, over here. Uh, which is just, you know, kind of reminding you that same pulsing is happening on that door as well. Again, to let, uh, you know, bicyclists or other car drivers know that, hey, there's a door open at night, which is definitely a cool feature. Again, you can control all of that from here or there. Ambient lighting, you have a bunch of cup holders as well. And you have a bunch of uh, charging ports here, actually. Right. So you have a, a tether hook and also a USB-C port, which is a uh, nice. I guess this is for, uh, you know, hooking up either a car seat or no, well, not a car seat, probably something else. Uh, but nonetheless, again, this has the fine line, um, you know, uh, wood grain, um, you know, finish with the, with the metal effect, which is nice. This over here, uh, I have no idea what that is, but you probably wouldn't care anyway. There's a bunch of speakers back here, part of the Harman Kardon sound system. And also, you also have a, a small little uh, sunroof back here, which is nice. Obviously, it closes. And you also have your huge panoramic sunroof in the front as well. And this is all finished off in Alcantara. And I'll tell you guys something, you know, it may not... It's, it's really not a really a big deal but Alcantara roof liner is really you know something else in a cabin it really has a sense of quality and also you know you know upscale feel on the on the inside which is definitely pretty cool all right so again stepping in all right everything's very nice again we we kind of uh, you know went off in a tangent while talking about the window uh, with the sun uh, sun protectors so we went to the back but at least we got the back covered again we talked about you know how we could uh, cover uh, we could also uh, move the seats from the front here. I mean, we talked about it, you know, steering wheel, you know, the standard steering wheel, nothing, uh, you know, you know, crazy, no M sport line, no M badges or anything. Very simple, very, very light steering, uh, steering wheel. I was driving it up here uh, to the, um, the upstairs uh, parking lot for park of your BMW. It, it's very, very light steering wheel. And obviously with the air suspension, it just glides, it just glides over bumps. And we'll see that in the test drive. Uh, but again, very very similar stuff over here again uh, check out the x5 video for that um, and over here I think the main difference that I could talk about right now is obviously the advanced driver's assistance package uh, that comes standard or that comes as an uh, option on this car so as you can see here there's these little light bars over here so that's part of the uh, advanced driver assistance package as you can see over here there's also a radar over here which I, you could see right now it's like pulsing it's actually watching my eyes right now so as, as you're driving if you have that uh, the mode on you have to turn it on you could basically uh, you know drive under 50 kilometers an hour hands-free right hands-free as long as you're looking uh, up ahead you know uh, you could basically drive hands-free it'll keep you in your lane um, it's adaptive you could change the distance of the car so if I turn on this right now assisted driving mode so mode will t uh, you know turn on your uh, you know your um, you know it's either your you know cruise control or you could you know uh, distance control right so you could uh, assisted driving is obviously uh, you know if you wanted to drive itself under 50 kilometers an hour or if you just want a simple you know adaptive cruise control you could choose that you could choose which one you want it'll show the car it'll, you'll, uh, it'll even show you any cars uh, that are beside you that is detecting kind of like Tesla which is nice 
I mean, again, but the rest are all simple controls. And if the driver assistance is active, this will stay green, okay? Uh, and if you, uh, for example, aren't looking on the road, the car uh, will will deactivate the the lane keep, and this will turn uh, yellow, and it'll pulse at you to tell, and it'll prompt you to put your hands back on the steering wheel if you wanted to continue. Um, so yeah, moving on to the middle again, very very similar to. Um, you know the X5. This is missing the ventilated seats, so the ventilated seats would be here. So you'd press this; it would go through your heating, and then it would go through your cooled if you keep pressing it. Um, so it's all integrated into one button, which is nice. Um, you know they could have fit another button just for a separate one, but um, I guess BMW just wanted to keep it nice and um, you know uh, not too clustered. This is also missing the massaging seats. But I gotta tell you guys, the massaging seats is only a $750 option on these cars. You know, if you look at something like, a, a, you know, a Audi, I think, I believe the Audi Q7, you, just to get the massage seating package, it's like $1,500. Mercedes, on the other hand, I believe is like $1,500 to $2,000 as well. You know, upwards of that money. This is $750. Bucks. Uh, the only, op, the only, um, the only, uh, the way you could get the massaging seats is you need to get that premium enhanced package. But, if you're already getting the premium enhanced package, which most of these cars will come with anyway, uh, then why not just you know add those massaging seats if you're factory ordering it? I think it's a no-brainer to be honest. Even the ventilated seats for 500 bucks, you know, for 1,250 bucks you're getting massaging seats and ventilated seats, which is probably the best uh, pricing in the market. So I, I I really have a strong feeling about that. I really feel like that's such a good price for massaging seats for both sides. I think that's absolutely amazing. And just uh, actually, just because I remember, uh, with the uh, multiple adjustments for the th uh, for the seat controls, if you just simply just rest your hand on it as well, it'll tell you what you're what you're what you're what you're touching. So if you just rest your hand on the uh, the lumbar it'll, um, on the reclining or you know repositioning, it'll tell you what you're putting your hand on. If you want to move the seat up or down, if I just put my hand on it, see, it'll just tell you it's gonna move it up or down so obviously you know if you don't if every time you just you don't want it to show you you know what it's doing see even if i move it it's it's showing me what i'm moving it's pretty cool the, i mean these things didn't really be you know, didn't really have to put this stuff but again they did um this is also missing the 800 dollar um you know the crystal gear shifter i be believe it's 800 dollars um it basically gives you all this in glass the start stop button also this um i mean honestly considering this is all black plastic the, the keypad kind of seems off, the fact that it's like this matte, you know, plastic thing. Um, the start button and this, it still doesn't feel as bad. This, this kind of feels like, you know, tacked on last minute. So um, I believe 800, 800 bucks for crystal controls. Again, it's not a necessity. It's a cool gimmick, but I think it seems pretty cool. Again, you have your wireless charging, again, part of the premium enhanced package. And an enhanced package also comes standard with uh, heated and cooled cup holders. Again, I went over this um, in, um, the uh, X5 video, uh, which you guys could check out, which is that. And just as I press comfort mode, you'll see the car is actually raising itself back to its normal height. Uh, again, in comfort mode, when you put into sport mode, you'll see what happens. See, the car is actually lowering itself down to the lowest setting to keep obviously the center of gravity as low as possible. I mean, you know, how, how low are you gonna go? You know, it's still an X7, but nonetheless, it still goes to the lowest setting, which is uh, actually doesn't go to the lowest setting. It goes uh, to uh, the second lowest setting. So again, if you want lower, push that down and it'll start moving it down. And it'll actually show you that it's going down as well. I think it's pretty cool. The enhanced package comes, uh, the X7 comes standard. With the X5, you have to get the enhanced package to get the um, air suspension, which I think it's pretty cool. Uh, it's definitely nice. But if you just put it back into comfort, it'll raise it back up. I've been driving for quite a bit now. And the thing I've noticed the second I left Parkview, was the fact that this car just glides over everything you know it's you know it's so smooth there's i'm driving in the worst part of toronto right now in terms of road quality and you know i'm barely feeling anything you know i'm barely feeling the worst bumps are just gliding over as if it's like a small crack on the road or whatnot you know just speaking in general in terms of comfort steering wheel extremely extremely light uh, not disconnected light but just enough that you know it's it's effortless it's effortless steering for such a big suv you you know you're moving the car from one direction to another without having to you know put in a lot of feed uh, a lot of feedback which is again something that you kind of want right this is an x-line this isn't an m50i or an m sport line where you know the customer who's driving it who is uh, aggressive most likely someone who gets this is definitely doesn't want to you know push it or do anything crazy with it um because most X5s will most likely come with the M Sport line anyway. And the fact that the person got this, I mean, 
it, it makes sense right there um, there's also an option actually for this car it's called uh, the integral active steering right so that's basically the BMW's way of saying four-wheel steering um, it essentially shortens the wheelbase uh, at lower speeds because the rear wheels turn in the opposite direction as the front higher speeds it the wheels turn in the same direction as the front um, to essentially help you know lengthen the wheelbase and add more stability right the longer the wheelbase the more stable the car is uh, which makes sense this has this has dual paned glass so for example you know regular car has win regular you know window this one has double that so it has two two uh, two glass uh, you know you know together that's essentially you know deadening the the outside noise which you really feel right now I'm just driving around in a residential neighborhood um, and it's just it's just amazing to drive you don't hear anything cars are passing by and I'm sure you guys I mean you guys could hear you don't hear anything you know aside from the occasional bumps here and there that you feel so you put into sport mode you know the gauges change suspension drop down one level um, it doesn't drop all the way down I believe you need to go at a certain speed for it to drop all the way down uh, which makes sense um, but you know you instantly feel that steering gets a little bit heavier uh, not again nothing overwhelming but it is heavy you you feel it um, suspension you start feeling a little, few more things on the road bumps here and there and you also um, the, the, the engine also revs at a slightly higher rpm you know it throttle response also increases as well you know you floor it it takes a second for the turbos to spool up but once it gets going uh, it's gone you know I wouldn't say this is uh, underpowered by any means but um, you know it's it take it just takes a second which is fine you know um, you know it's an ex it's acceptable for this specific car um, but if you just put into sport transmission actually and let's uh, you know use our paddle shifters yeah yeah it, it, the the response is definitely much better um, yeah it's 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 very quick this uh, does have the adaptive uh, cruise control so if I just turn this on it goes to uh, assisted driving if I just press set it'll read the uh, speed limit and um, I could just press set and it'll just take it to the speed limit or I could change the speed for however I want it it, it tells you which uh, if there's cars around you uh, it'll shows you shows you your car it'll show you the car in front of you it'll show you if there's any cars beside you if you're changing lanes it'll show if there's a car beside uh, it'll show that it's changing lanes it has like uh, you know uh, emergency braking assist you know um, lane change assist lane keep assist you know adaptive cruise control obviously as standard or you could have the the driving uh, ass driving assist actually which actually drives for you so under I believe under 50 kilometers an hour um, you know the the car will drive itself as long as you are looking ahead as I talked about the radar uh, looks at your eyes and makes sure you're not you know uh, looking here or there as long as you're, as you're doing that and you have it set on and everything is good to go then um, the car will uh, you know keep you keep you in your lane very well uh, this also has the the BMW drive recorder so I believe uh, um, I'm not gonna look look into it but I know it is an option um, in the enhanced package where it's basically a dash cam that uh, BMW gives you that's integrated integrated into the system that's looking forward um, which is nice Mercedes has something similar as well uh, but that's a separate option and it's a two thousand dollar option for the ad advanced drive assistance package which is not bad honestly um, for drive assist, I think that's that's pretty much up to par. I think Audi and Mercedes have it in the two thousand dollar ballpark as well. But yeah, that's pretty much for the X Seven. You know, you know, if you're looking for the you know the ultimate ultimate you know family SUV luxury, utmost comfort. You know, definitely check out this one. This one's available right now actually. Um, it's a demo, so you can definitely try it. Come to Parkview BMW. Look for Denver. Um, and take this out for a test drive and look uh you know see for yourself you know how you know this is literally like driving on a cloud <laughs>